Some people call it process. Yes. Some people call it process. Process. It's just like you want to do something in the industrial production. They call it processor. Processor. How to put yam flour. Things like that. So God processes us to be fit to do what He wants us to do. So that's in doing that. Places on pause on his people. And they see people saying, oh God, this thing is too difficult. In, in most cases, people complain when they are going through processes. Which is the, so that's dealing. So dealing of God to his children. I wrote this, let me just read it. The dealings of God to his children are the various ways and means through which God prepares us to be fit for his special purpose or ways by which he trains us to be fit for what he wants us to do on that is for it. Praise the Lord. So, that's what dealing is all about. In most cases, dealings involve series of things. One, go with test an individual. So, dealings involves testing. You will test. Is this person, is this person fit? For what I want them to do, let me test it. So, it involves testing. It involves checking out our integrity. Then it's it involves God trying to get us to master some things, to, to, to get the mystery of certain things. So in the process of dealings, these are the things God is trying to get out of us. 
I want this person to master Ilo. I want this person to master this and that. So God pushes something on our waves. Let's let me start from um, our text. So Corinthians. Unless I should be exalted, but please don't make noise with your mouth. If you want to look something, just do something. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan. To buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. If God wants to use a man, He will place something that will not be to go out of measure on His life. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's start, let's start doing this by. Going through a case study. We'll be doing a few case studies. So we'll start with the children of, you know, because, you can, you come on, say thanks. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, we, 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 the first case study will be that of the children of Israel. That of the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. So, Exodus chapter 13. So, and it came to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, speak to us in Jesus' name. Mm. Let your name be exalted. Mm. Give understanding. Mm. And it came to pass. That's Exodus 13 from 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not to through the way of the land of the Philistine. Although that was near. For God said, lest paraventure the people repent when they see war and they return to it. So what's the issue there? This is a practical example. God wanted to train the children of Israel. So this is is it very easy for them to pass? Which is the way of the land. But God said, no. You will pass the way of the land. You will pass the way of the wilderness. Because there are some things I want to teach you. You see, people of God, they are going through some things. And began to complain. Lord, what's the issue? Why is it like this? Why will God say, is people should not pass through the way of the land, which is very easy. Just move a plain land. Just move. Go to where you are going. Simple. Look at what the scripture says. It said, and it came to pass. When Pharaoh had let the people go. See, imagine. After a series of suffering. So, the people are expecting that they should begin to enjoy. He said, God let them not through the way of the land. Although that was near. So he took them through a more finished journey. He left the one that is near. He said, no, go through this one that is far. He said, though that was near. But God said, less. See, the problem is, many a times when God is trying to do something, he's trying to do something, he's considering us Look at what the Bible says. It said, less. Paraventure, the people repent when they see war. And they will return to Egypt. So let me take them to a distant journey. There's a shorter way. He said, no. You will go through this. God wanted to train the children of Israel. He wanted to test their integrity. He wanted to 
trained them on integrity. He wanted to test their faithfulness. Anything God wants to test in you, he will train you first. So God wanted to test them. So before they test, he will give you a training. Praise the Lord. Before they test, there will be a training. So God said, okay, you are going to pass through this route. Praise the Lord. Amen. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness, from the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up and nest out, and nest out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God, Surely visit you, and you shall carry off my bones away. Hence with you. And they took their journey from Sukkot and encamped in Etam, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them, and by night in a pillar of fire. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God wants us to learn mastery of things. So is this somebody? That needs a lot of food. And he couldn't even meet half of his needs. God is trying to train that person. Is it is not difficult for God to do anything? You can see somebody looking for the fruit of the womb and say, God, what is it? Can't you? Is there anything too difficult for God to do? Yes. But in most cases, maybe God wants to teach that person. You know, endurance, for instance. Okay, see a perfect example, the story of Anna. Anna was looking for the fruit of the womb. He was trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And yet, there's another woman right in the same house, married to the same husband, who is always molesting her. See, perfect example. God wanted to teach Anna how to undo that situation. You see many who are looking for the fruit of the womb. But the pressure. You see, at times God wants to train people how to cope with pressure. How not to mess up even in the face of what you are looking for. If it were to be many people that were in the shoe of Anna, they would have been fighting with the other woman. You this useless woman. You see, because you see, Anna was not saying anything. God was training him. I mean, I rather. God was training her. She mastered that perfectly. Anna was not complaining. The only thing she, she did was cry. It's not a crime to cry. <laughs> you cry unto the Lord after all. There are many places that say the people cried unto the Lord. The people cried unto the Lord. Instead of crying on that person with anger, saying the wrong thing, somebody says, You see, you this poor person. You, you are stupid. How will you call me poor? God is trying to train you to master how to manage situation. It's a kind of failure. It's a kind of failure. And we must not fail. The problem is God is trying to train people instead of getting the lesson so that you can move on. They fail the lesson so they have to repeat the class. The problem. God is training somebody there, possibly for three years. The fruit of the womb. Let me put it on it. In three years, she will master the things I want to teach her. This woman will be handling millions of people. Possibly, she will become this and that. Look at this. I want to train her how to undo pressure. One, I want to. Train her on how to undo insults. Two, for instance. How to undo many things. Abuses from people without sinning against God. Anna never sinned against God or even the woman. The woman that was molesting her, saying all sorts of things, making fun of her. So you see, Anna just stayed gently. She was just crying to God. Instead of reacting, go into place of prayer. Because it's a dealing. 
There's nothing. It takes God nothing to give somebody a baby. It takes God nothing to give somebody whatever millions you want. So is this somebody going through the kind of hardship? And then some people insult you. Some people say all sorts of things and you react. You just feel it. You pass and get the promotion. Possibly that's why many people are still on the same spots. You are looking for something. Some people are trusting God for a wife, trusting God for a husband, for God's sake. Let me form something in this man. Let me deal with this man. So, possibly God said, in two years, everything I want this person to learn, she will learn. Or he will learn. But if that person, as God is trying to train, master this thing, get a mastery of this thing. So, God is trying to bring issues. Somebody will say, hey, look at her. She can't do something. She's not yet married. We are younger women. Get him married. They, they are not talking to her. She's just overhead. So, you. Why are you talking to me like that? You are just feeling. You are feeling. Just sit down and learn what everything you go through in life. There is a lesson there. But the problem is people look at the problem. And they are running up and down for solution. It's not bad. I'm not saying you should not run for solution. But go to God. So whenever you feel pressed, as long as a child of God, anything God allows in your life is for a reason. It's for a purpose. There's something. Even Jesus, his own son, he had to do so many things. He went through so many challenges. In fact, there was a time Jesus said, I wish you let this come. Pass over me. Say, no. It will not pass over. There's a purpose I have to achieve. But the Bible says, light affliction is for a moment. So that moment can mean one year, it can mean two years. Praise the Lord. Yeah. There's something God wants us to learn. But the problem is, People don't get to learn, they just get to complain. Let's go back to, you know, the children, the children of Israel. We know the story. So, God wanted to form something. They, they were going to possess a land. God has a code. God has an expectation for those people that were going to possess that land. So, he wants to fashion something in them. So to fashion that thing, he wanted to train them. Put the fear of God in them. Put discipline. Put wisdom. You see, many things to, to, to be learned in situations and challenges of life. Some people, they have to learn how to discipline them, themselves. Some people, they have to learn how to save. God is going to be giving you millions or billions. But he sees that uh, this one, I should give them billions now. This one will just be doing nonsense with the money. He said, let me test him and train him with little lack. Little. Little. So that when those abundance now comes, he would have mastered savings. He would have mastered how to invest. You see, during that process, when this young person or old person or whatever is supposed to be learning, he just kept complaining, 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 complaining. That's what the children of Israel, that was what they did. All throughout, when God told Moses, take these people through the way of the wilderness. He didn't give, even tell Moses why. That's why many of us, God will not tell us why. He will just bring something you don't know. The thing just came on you. This one, this is a start for everything. The Bible cannot be broken. If somebody may say, what, what is this man saying? He said, there's time for everything. Time to marry and time to be fine. But God is not going to be beyond your capacity. Whatever you are going through, you have the capacity for it. That's why he's bringing it your way. You have the capacity for it. And he said, it's for a moment. After all, see, the Bible is complete. A thousand years before the Lord. 
like we did. So we are counting out when you for you maybe stay a moment. <laughs> stay a moment. Let me form something in you. I want to deal with you. You I have a lot for your life. A lot for your life. But can you just just two years get this leg and get promoted? But many people do. This is the problem. Many people don't learn nothing. Like the children of Israel, they were going through the wilderness. God wanted to teach them faiths. He wanted to teach them faiths. He wanted to teach them obedience. Gain mystery of faith. Gain mystery of obedience. Gain possibly how to say because there was no food for them in the wilderness. They began to complain. You see, like many of us, instead of learning, no problem, just keep praying. Because the Bible says, pray until your joy is full. So even when you are going through challenges, keep praying. But instead of that, you see some people, that's when they will not become another person. So we will not become like the devil. They become wicked. So if they have opportunity, possibly they are a teacher, they become wicked to the students. Because of the grace of it. So, so instead of praying, do you see what Anna did? What did she do? She went to pray. Isn't it? And God answered her. You see, there are too many stones. We want to be going through all. We won't go too far. So we just I'll just try and uh, shorten the story so that we get it and uh, move on and get the mind of God for this particular teaching, today's teaching. 
we just can we just learn what God wants us to learn? A new God. The children of Israel never learned. They didn't learn. Everything is just complaints. Complaints. Moses, there's no food. You want us to die here? Oh my goodness, God told me. What kind of what kind of feet is that? Moses, there's no water. Leave us in Egypt. <laughs> See people that are going to train to build capacity. No wonder many of them died in the wilderness. When they were leaving Egypt, God did not say they will live 40, use 40 years in the wilderness. Did God say that? He said, Moses. The only thing he told Moses, he didn't tell him the duration. He said, Moses, you people are not going to go through the way of the land. You will go through the way of the wilderness. That's all. But they never learned. So God made them to repeat over and over again. The repetition took many lives. God forbid. Isn't it? Many of them died in the wilderness. Praise the Lord. Many of them died. What a waste. What a waste. Even it was, oh my goodness, it was even the same similar issue with Moses who was to lead them. It was also the same thing for him. Many men of God, pastors, will be frustrated in ministry. It's, it's the same thing. It's also a kind of thing. Somebody will frustrate you, your followers, your this and that, frustrate you. Will you see? They make Moses to get angry. All the mistakes Moses made are because of these people. So as God was training the people, he was training the leader too. Say you to learn your own. Learn your own. Let me train you on how to handle pressure. Look at Moses, something like that. You couldn't handle pressure. Even when somebody is making mistakes, you are a man of God, you are teaching them, you must correct them. Definitely. But you should not lead to sin on your own part. In few cases, Moses trying to correct the people of Israel led to, and God said, you won't see that. You won't see. Oh my goodness. The plan of God was to train everybody to get the standard for entering that land. No wonder many people did not enter because they never got the standard. That is the kind, that, that's what we are talking about. The kind of dealing, you get this, God is saying, oh my God, I have a lot to do through your life. Let me train you in this. He won't tell you in most cases. You just see that this and that is happening. You begin to wonder why, 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 why. Your own is to learn. Pass. Don't feel so that you can get promotion. So, that was it. Then, look at it. I, I talked about God will test you. God wants to bless you with riches. You know what the Bible says? It says, if you are not faithful in that mammon, how will God give you the true riches? So he will test. He tested the children of Israel. Look at, is that not Exodus chapter 16 or so? When they were complaining, even in the midst of complaining, he said, let me take try. He tells them again. He said, okay, Moses, I will send quail. Quail and manna. Tell them, they should just take one and one. That's the quantity they should take. That I may test them. Let me read it. Very important. God will test us. So some of those things you are thinking is a challenge. It's a test. If you, there's something he wants you to undo. He must test you before he launch you into those things. So you are, you keep complaining, God, where is your eyes? Can't you see? Mm -hmm. to train you. At times, when somebody is crying, God is feeling it. Yeah. Yes, I can, but show you into what I want. If you will get to where I want you to get to. So he said, I will test them. Look at it. That's chapter 16, Exodus 16. Verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, 
And the people shall go out and gather a certain quarter every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Whether they will walk in my law or not. So you will test us. You will do that. You see these people, they kept stealing. So we went to pack more than what they can eat. I guess those, some of those who that packed the right quantity, they are part of those people that entered the police. I want to believe so. <laughs> because he said, I want to test them. There's something I need in these people that want to press the promised I want to make sure they have it. So let me test them. Let me test them. Let me. Some enter the promised land. I believe those people that passed. They that passed this test were the ones that entered. Because the Bible tells you that many died. Even including the leader, Moses. Let's learn. A student will read, study, understand, and pass. That's what God wants us to do. When all these things are happening, learn. Learn to pass and move forward to the next stage. Because the Bible says, joy comes in the morning. Trouble can last in the night. So it's a night time. Hey, this is too hard. Eh? It's just a night time. So joy comes in the morning. So just take your own part of it and move on. Take your own part of it and move on. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So this is very crucial as we move on to um, other cases. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now let's look at Paul. Acts. This is very important. Acts 9.15. I love this. Let's look into it. Very important. Acts 9.15. And this is the man that brought about the text we are considering. He said, because of the abundance of revelation that God gave me to my goodness. That's it. Well, let's, let's really read Acts. Acts um, 9.15. Acts 9. Fifteen, right? So, Acts chapter 9, verse 15. Please, listen to this. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. <laughs> Somebody is shouting, God has chosen me. God has chosen me. Yes. I'm going to be a worldwide evangelist. I'm going to be a renowned pastor. Listen to what you may likely get on your way to that. On your way to that. There will always be something on the way. Joseph, the only thing Joseph saw was, ah, I saw the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars. They were buying that thing. One of our mentors used to say, God did not tell Joseph. He did not show him the prison. God did not show him the pot- show him Potiphar's house. I mean, uh-huh. God only show him they were bound. They were buying. So you are seeing something glorious, something radiant, shining. But God showed you that quite all right. It's God that showed you. You will get there. But the roots. To that place, the path you will follow to that place may not be as palatable as that location you are going to. Okay, let's go back to Paul, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. So it's a kind of world, worldwide movement and kings, not rich raff. So you will bear God's name amongst the Gentiles. Amongst kings and the children of Israel. Now look at this verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So somebody that God had great plans for. He said, 
the most suffer ever for my name's sake. I will show him how great things he must suffer. So you see somebody going through a kind of suffering, say, God, for what he did, don't forget. It may not be in all cases. Some may have it smooth. Possibly, they are, where they are, what they are going to be handling may not be complicated. God knows that. So if, or possibly you have mastered everything you need to master. You have all the traits well formed. God has formed whatever. And that's why you need to be. Yesterday we were talking about, see, this thing is step one. We talk about Christ being formed in us. If that process of Christ being formed in you is fast enough, then you can press him to what he wants for you. That's why, don't look at Mr. Hey. He says, see this, Mr. this, see this, brother, this. No, you are not going to the same way. And even if where God is taking you looks similar, there are different ways. Yesterday, I was, I was introducing what we are going to be doing today. I said, Julie, I said, you have two children. You, you, they, they have different traits. Parents should understand this. You have three, four children. You handle them the same way. You notice some. You don't need to be too tough on them. They, they get what you need them to get. Some, you have to be extra tough. Some, in their studies, you just explain to them lightly and they get it. Another, you have to explain a little bit further. So that is the same way. The same way. This is the same If God is saying this. Now, let's go back. Now, this is Paul. They were talking about Paul at his point of conversion. That's when he got blind. When the man of God saw that vision, is the man of God God was talking to about Paul here. I will show him how much he must suffer. Say, go and pray for him so that he will receive his sight. Let his sight be restored. So now, this same Paul, now, oh, now please, let's get it quite right. It's not the same man talking about our texts in that Second Corinthians. So from that, let's go back to Second Corinthians 12, which is our text for this seven days program. Today is day three. So now, let's read from verse 1 of that 12. I think this will really help us. This boast, okay, let me read New King James Version. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. We've come to visions and revelations. Take note of that. You want visions and revelations? There's a price for it. I'm not the one that wrote the Bible. Let's read if somebody say, God, I want you to use me, do this and that. He said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, we dealt with this story of this man, day one. That was what we dealt with, day one. So if somebody is interested about getting that, you can just check out. Whether in the body, I do not know. Or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into paradise and had inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. That's the way we're going today. From five downward is our concern. He said, of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. That's the moment. There may be infirmities. It doesn't mean God is not with you. Infirmities could mean so many things. To some people, it could be sickness. It could be lack. To some people, it could be delay. In marriage, sit down. Praise the Lord. So it could be anything. He said infirmities. Don't forget God had said earlier in Acts. He said, I must show you. How much he must suffer. Why? He said he will represent me. He will, he will be a worldwide evangelist. Which Paul eventually became. That was at his conversion. God was already saying this about him. Just like Joseph. God said many things about Joseph. Come on, Stephen. Praise the Lord. 
So, verse 5, infirmities. 6, for though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me about that he sees me to be, or hears from me. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation. You know, Paul reason for this trouble. This another, you know, yesterday we were talking about a dimension of tongues. Today we are talking about not that dimension of tongues. Which God uses to form his people, to make his people fit for what he wants them to do. To do. So, for the abundance of revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. Huh? He said, God, give me revelations. When I open the scriptures, let the revelation flow. So that when I speak, they said, the man of God has come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah, simple that. Don't be doing it. <laughs> That's why God is not asking some people. Telling you, some people will pray. God, go to Matthew. God, give me grace. Grace for revelation. Grace for special dimensions in the spirit. I want to be. Uh, he said, You want abundance of revelation. He said, For the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan. Who buffet me? Let's read another version. The same. Which one has a very simple English? I think NIV. Seven. To keep me. To keep me from becoming conceited. Conceit is a touch of pride. God needs you to do one touch of You're already proud. That's why many people are saying, God, give me the gift of wisdom. Then you do so. I will train you. I start training you, you start crying to me. <laughs> God, where's your faith? I said, uh, you want me to give you gift of healing? I need to put you through some things so that the gift of healing will not finish you. Some people have been finished with some of those things. It consumed them because they escaped training. Some push like the children of Israel. They ran out of it. They ran out of training. So that's why he said to give people is not a problem. He said, I will pour out my spirit of flesh. But the old flesh, we said on the one, the flesh that we received it, something must be done on that flesh. The flesh that we receive, the flow of the spirit, said, I don't have a problem. But the problem is many who are shouting, God, the apostle this, pastor that, I won't do fire, fire. They calm down. And you think the process, the feelings, the tongues, they say, to keep on becoming conceited. Small thing, you're already having conceit. Yes, we are the big man of God. What did you do? Small thing. That is nothing. God is looking for people that will not share in His glory. Miracles will happen. And you are not, conceit is not coming upon you. So if that will be the case, you have to be trained and tested before those things will be released. So some, you see, the, those things will be released gradually. Gradually, okay, this one can handle this. Let's take it. Before it will consume you. So, revelations was what put Paul in trouble. Oh my goodness. To keep me from becoming considered because of this surpassingly great rev- too much of revelation is too much just flowing. It, it is evident he wrote scriptures. You wrote scriptures. Praise the Lord. Sit down. You wrote scripture that blessed and is still blessing life. 
to keep me from becoming considered because of this surpassingly great revelation, there was giving me a thorn in my flesh to keep me from becoming conceited. Because of this surpassingly great revelation, there was giving me a thorn to keep him so that that thing will not consume me. So that thing you are saying, God, what is this happening? There's something God is trying to protect. Until those things are protected, that thing may not be lifted. So at times we are delaying many things. Get things right. God is saying, this one, I want to release. Is this Smith Wiggles what I heard about? This man will do miracles, do all sorts of things. Yes, he's battling with kidney stones. Possibly that was there, like where this Apostle Paul said this one. This way I'm using it. Let me give him something that will always remind him that he's still a man. Okay, so just dash him kidney stone. Sorry, you transmit. Take this kidney stone. So, Smith Wiggles, what will be performing miracles? Oh my goodness. Miracles, and yet the man that is performing miracles, that kidney stone will carry him. That kidney stone will carry him again. Right in the place, he will quickly excuse himself to the toilet and pass another stone. The messenger of Satan to buffet him, to keep him from being conceited. Say, yes, you are assistant God. No, take. That was what happened to devil, to Satan. He wanted to be like God. That's why he became Satan. Lucifer. Say, yeah, we can be like God. We can fight this place out and take it. He said, he missed it. He, he to perfect him. For, to keep me from be, being conceited. What is making you to feel conceit? Conceit is strong. Little thing. Some people, they can sing. Just more singing, you are singing. Say, yes. We can sing for the Lord. When we sing every way we scatter. We have, oh my goodness, so much to do. That's a story for another day. I want to talk about singing. <laughs> but maybe I should talk, talk about it. You see, there's nothing that you should. When revelation will come, he will trust that you can handle it. Let me just, as we are touching it, let me talk about it. I have several songs I did not compose. Several songs that I will sing from my sleep. I will I've not heard it anyway. God will just give me the songs. Many of them. I will just wake up from my sleep singing the song. And I'll go and record it. Watch out. The time is coming for that. It's not yet time. We'll do songs because they are breathed from heaven by the inspiration of the Almighty. The songs, it kept coming so that it has not stopped. Just sleeping, you sing out. I have films I've written a lot. Watch out, it's also coming. A lot. I w- in the revelation, I will just be like I'm watching a film. Of course, God will not give me everything. I'm talking of films that, that I run into episodes, seasons. It's real. It's real. So, but calm down. It, will you not be conceited? He said to keep me from being conceited. Revelation is real, but we must learn to handle it. We must learn to handle it. Praise the Lord. There was giving me a thorn in my flesh, the message of Satan, to torment, to torment. So some people are saying, why is God tormenting me? Let's give me a practical example of this. Thank God my wife is here. We left Obumoshon. 2020. This program is like these two years we left for, for, for full time ministry and part time business, like I used to say. <laughs> full time ministry and part time business. You know, two years, 16th, right? On the 16th, became two years we left to Show. And when we left to Show, we went to Guagualada. Before coming down here, so we spent that. That's how God directed us. He said, Go and stay in this place while you prepare to come. Why stay in Guagualada? Why are you prepared to come down to the village? So we spent one year in Guagualada. And it was a place of dealing, a place of formation. 
a place. People said all sorts of things. That's another thing. God said this and that. I want you to do. I will do. Can you take the process? God will tell you ridiculous things. When I say ridiculous, I mean the word ridiculous. God will tell you to do things and people will ridicule you and say, are you crazy? How can you try that? Somebody will say, so what is it now that you are doing there? All sort of ridiculous. <laughs> but you see, when God begins to manifest, that's not where I'm going. So why we were in Guacolada? I had this pain, sharp pain in my stomach. Very painful pain. Very painful. When it comes, it's so terrible. And it was running for like some months. It will come and go, it will come and go. Very terrible pain not to act. Terrible. I don't wish anybody has that kind of pain. When it comes, it's terrible. And I began to play God. Let this thing, let this thing go. Now, before we go further, let me read. What um, Paul now said. See, he said in verse 8, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it may depart from me. Paul pleaded, God, this thing is too painful. You know God's answer? He said, my grace is sufficient for you. What? That's the answer to pain? Somebody say, I need money. Oh, see all my mates. God said, my grace is not. It's my grace. It's the currency you need. is my grace, not money. Why? The money will still come. But you need grace first. There's a lesson you want to teach you that period. Until you master it, that money may not come. Until you go, except you go through another way. The way of the world. Stop that. Young man, sit down. You need to master this. This is why many are suffering. Can you just stand down? There are many things I, I, I won't be able to go through from personal experiences. I don't want to share too much of personal experiences. You know. You want to share more. So he said, concerning these things, I pleaded with the Lord three times that I'm it might depart from me. And the only answer God gave him is my grace. He said that I prayed three times. Some people have prayed on one million times. You have not learned the lesson. Praise the Lord. So what happened? At times, some of such people, what God wants you to learn is the healing virtue of God. Learn the healing grace of God. So at times, look at Moses. Moses said, your hand. It is. And when Moses brought his hand, he became left. He said, put it back. And he was healed. He learned healing virtue. Some people may be going through experiences like that. Some may be having cancer. You, God, maybe God wants to show you how to pray for people that are having cancer. Because there's nothing God can do. Is there anything too hard for God to do? There's nothing. Foot of the womb. Psh, psh, you, he can give you money. Psh, he can give you two billions. There's nothing. But there's one or two things to be learned. So I kept praying. Lord, this pain, this pain. And at the point I knew I needed to learn something. I tried to gather things. Please stop that. So, this thing, this pain remained. It got to the point my wife said, you know how people will want to muscularize things. My wife said, you have to stop using all these drugs. You know, let the faith be in you. You see, you know? Let the faith uh, stop giving the door. I said, No, no, no. There's something I miss. There's something I miss. Because God is not there, He can answer. He hears. I said, I need a scripture from God. Just the following morning, the following morning, we mentioned that, we discussed that. I got this. I was just watching a television program. I think it was Joyce Mayer. And I got the scripture. I said, this is the end to this thing. To the glory of God, since that moment, I've never taken that drug. That's over a year now. Huh? So,
So, somebody, God may want you to learn the healing virtues. Many things to learn, but the problem is people keep complaining and never learning. Somebody may be like, That syndrome has finished many people. It has finished many people. Jesus said, Peter, wait. He says, Satan wants to sift you. The devil wants to sift you, but I pray for you. There are many people like that in the church. They say, We, the brother of God, we are flowing in the spirit. Somebody is they are preaching. You, say, you know the word, the word they are preaching is convicting you. They say, me? Ha! You know how much God has used me? Jesus was telling Peter, Peter, the devil want to sift you. Many people are like that. Eh? If Peter, that Jesus was talking to one on one, how much more? If a man of God is telling you, or oh, small me like this in the village. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Girl, my Praise the Lord. You see, People are hearing what we condemn and save them of a great danger ahead. That's another dimension of dealing. Some people don't like it. They don't like correction. I was living here with a devil one day. Shop with a devil said, God still, what did he put it? He said, God still, what? Rebukes me. Yeah. So if God is rebuking that man, who are you? My God cannot rebuke. So if the word is rebuking you, you are, you are, Making a, 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 a bulletproof for the word of God. Ah, a danger is lying. Like God was telling Peter, Peter, I want to build you to be a rock. But this is your red like attitude that's eating deep on you. You, have, you know what Peter, Peter said? God was telling him that so that he can walk on him. He said, No, me? I will never betray you. We will go and die together. We will go and die together. Me, I'm hot. Fire brand. I'm hot. I'm hotter than fire. <laughs> Many hotter than fire brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. I'm still not telling Peter. Let me help. Let me help you. He said, No, me, I will not deny you. We will go and die together. Me, I am. Okay. We will deny you. This, this, this will happen. You see, there are various dimensions of these stones. Some people are thinking they are high up there. And God is telling you, yeah, this is where you are. I had that experience here when I was serving. I said, I don't want to give two personal experiences. But thanks, we may need it. I said, when we are coming, we are coming from camp, they give us a song. Carry your candle into the world. But how did they sing that song? I wanted to see Korea. <laughs> All right, so they gave us that song. And I was like, I, I got the zeal. Many people have zeal without knowledge. They are ah, this village, they will know. I served in this same village. They will know they must to collect fire for fire. Hey, we will do evangelism. And when I came, I landed. I saw God telling me, listen, this is really just like Peter said. God says, calm down. Down. Let's do serious work on you. Calm down. Let's do serious work on you. Let me make you have something to deal with you, to work out in you. I have something to work out in you. I said that must be the devil. Ah, that must be the devil. Just like Peter. Peter would have called Jesus the devil for what he said because, but because he's seeing him eye to eye like this. He couldn't. So I said, no, this must be the devil. No, 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 no. And I began to do the sort of methods. 
when you see the I, you see the example now. You should look at it. I I I, I felt like running away from the village when I was young. But here I am today. God is doing His work. Many of us, God is calling us. There's this thing I want to do in your life. Let me form this. Let me do this. Let me do that in you. But in most cases, in most cases, we don't want it. There are several dimensions to this issue. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Because this thing has to be fixed. Very, it's important that this thing must be fixed. So Paul prayed. God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Why must we lay our faith? Why are you not going to allow God to quickly do what he wants to do so that we can press on? We can press on. God is saying, this thing you are saying you want to do for me, that or that I told you you will do for me. There's something I need you to go through. There are some things I need you to gain mastery, gain mastery of. You can master it. But many of the time, we keep complaining. We keep complaining. Instead of learning, what is there for me to learn? Many people don't learn nothing and they keep repeating. If you go into a secondary school, I remember my secondary school. If you fail either of maths or English, school of science, if you fail either of maths or English, you are not getting promotion. So many people are failing the mathematics and the English and everything. So they keep repeating. So God said, it, she will learn it and I will bring her husband. Two years, she will learn it. I will bring her husband. But she refuses. Do you understand? Let him not distract me. Can just leave. Do you understand? So people are not learning. They are not learning. Come inside now. They are not learning. Praise the Lord. Very important. Very important. So now, let's go to this. I think we still have time. Praise the Lord. People are, you know what, where we started, what caused Paul issue was, let him just pass this there. Go like that. That was fun. Your people are not here because of fun and war. God is Kasana people. Praise the Lord. So thank God, just follow us. I, I believe you will understand. Now, let's talking about the issue of revelations. God gives revelation. We don't ask for God to give us revelations. Which is what brought this matter. But there are requirements. There are requirements. He said the spirit of truth. God's spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. He said the spirit of truth will be Teach you things to come. Yesterday I was telling you, thank God that God can be, I was it day before yesterday, I was telling you or some other, that God can reveal things to us. Now, so many, that was what brought Paul into this situation. The revelation. He said, the spirit, it will come. And it will show you things to come. It will show you things to come. Spirit of truth. So let, let's check this. John 16, 13. Praise the Lord. John 16, 13. Say, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. For whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you, he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. For he will speak of what is new and declare it to you. Amen. That's the plan of God for all of us. 
God wants to reveal peace that will make you prosper. God wants to reveal peace. Those people that are men of God, that will make your ministry prosper. But are we ready to comply with the Spirit of God? Many of us are not ready. Let's look at Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Praise the Lord. Matthew 16. Matthew 16. You see, this now helps us to really look at why many people have issues with getting the revelations from God. I think we round up at about somewhere around there. But let's read 15, 16 to 17. 15, 16, huh? And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye understand that whatsoever? Okay, sorry. Okay, yeah. 16, rather. Thank you. Matthew 16, 15 to 17. I was reading 15. 16 to 17. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. This is the problem. The flesh cannot see people as a God, the revelation, but here you are keeping malice. When God, when I stand like this, I want to see. Just let the revelation be clear. But the same man that is talking is keeping malice. Hmm? This same man that is talking is fighting. This same man that is talking has issues of flesh, all sorts of things. Lusts, immorality, all sorts of things. But yet, see what Jesus said. See what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bajun, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Flesh and blood works against the revelation. Flesh. That's why a thorn must come on it. The works of flesh cannot cope with the revelation from the Spirit of God. So you see somebody operating in the flesh. Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonah, blessed are you. For what? Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You are shouting revelation like what they say. He said that flesh, a thorn must be given into it. Let the work of flesh die in you before you can be opened up to revelation. You say, like I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. Secret things belongs to God. He so wants to give it to men. Oh my goodness. If I don't want to be saying too much about it. Secret things belongs to God. He wants to give it to men. He will give us, He will show us secrets. He said, Come to me. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. See what Paul was saying about the man he was describing in verse 2 of verse 3. He said, I know the man. Say with that, that was where we started our discourse on, on, on day one. Today is day three. Secret things belong to God. The secret of God. Some people, they was. Uh, thank God. The other day we went to Jeguewa. I don't know, maybe it was the day you were there. There's a boy that said, I said, what do you want God to do for you? And the boy said, I want a mansion. I want a mansion. And I laughed. God will not give you a mansion. He will give you secrets to get a mansion. He will show you things to do. I know then God will like to drive a jeep. Eh? God will show you some things to do that will bring a jeep to you. That's God for you. Say, you may say, thank God if you do this and this. The business will bring something. But the secret doesn't come on people whose flesh are thick. Whose flesh has not received tons, tons, 
It's not me. I'm not the one that wrote the Bible. Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But here you are. You are operating in flesh. The works of flesh. He said, me, I know. And it was up Christian. All this one that they are saying flesh should die. We should not, uh, we should not do all this gyrating. All this lost. It's not a big deal. I can you know, touch the earth and, you know, it's part of it and I see it. No, you have the thing in your face. Let hell not catch up with you. He said, God, all the sexually immoral shall be casted into the lake of fire. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You want to operate in the revelation and we need this. We need this in life. You know, if you will not take it, that's why some people can go all the way from Lagos to one local abalist in one far, far village. You tell them, who are the people disturbing me in my place of work? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. They will say, yeah, drink this tea. Eat this rat. Eat it. Is this sweet? <laughs> they say all sorts of nasty things. You don't know. For people to chase power because they don't want to take the original. He said, just... Let we mentioned it the other time. Let the works of flesh, adultery, fornication, lying, name it. The Bible listed it. Sexual immorality, impurity, disobedience, indiscipline, all sorts of things like that. Malice, envy. Some people are so envious of others, even in Christian though. So men of God are so envious of another man of God. And you say you want revelation. You will just stay there on one spot. Because I'm not the one. It's even Jesus that said it. Not any other Bible character. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. That's why many people, including businesses, God reveals business secrets. Academics. God reveals academics. I read people that were in the exam or they were busy for God, they couldn't read. They went to the exam and God was supplying answer to them. And they were like it. They were like it. There's nothing God cannot do. When we not reveal those things to someone who is operating in the realm of flesh, they come up either. He said, Come on me. I will show you great and mighty things. But thou knowest not. But he said, Just like that. Flesh cannot walk with it. There's a song in Yoruba. He said, I want the Holy Spirit. That song it says, I want the Holy Spirit. Because these bodies cannot do the work of the spirits. So God, give me the Holy Spirit. That's what we're saying. So Paul, we we'll go on to visions and revelations. He knows what he's saying. He's qualified for it. The flesh has been dealt with. The flesh has been dealt with. So he can move on. Press on into visions and revelation. It's true. It's real. Yeah. These are serious dimensions. Free flowing. God can give. Free flowing. You see things anyhow. Things that doesn't even concern you. God can show you dimensions. But what is it? The flesh must be dealt with because it will not support the work of the spirit. It will not. We need to operate in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So we need the spirit of God. If we are going to amount to what God wants in our life, thank God. I used to say jokingly, only God knows. What he has in plan for you, by me, is great. Because the Bible said, the thought I have towards you are of good and not of evil. But he wants you to move close to him. Move close to him. Move close to him. Then when we move close to him, he will make us who he wants us to be. You see that song says in Christ, I'm pleaded. He said that he may, he may, he will, I'm meant to be. If he will make you who you are meant to be, you must be free from the works of the flesh. 
we must be free from the works of the flesh. No man amounts to what God wants them to be. You see, people are causing all sort of, you know, words, wrong words from unbelievers. You see somebody saying, God say I will become the president. During this primary, they are doing. It's possible maybe they are secrets to become. It doesn't mean God did not tell him. You don't understand. It may just be that they are secrets that he did not receive from God. Men of God, with flesh. They are envious of all men of God. No wonder they can't have the secret to push them to where God wants them to get to. Say that one. What's it? He's always on television. He's always on that. Is this, is that? That's why they are not getting the revelations, the secrets. God hides things. It's meant for men to search it out. That's what the scripture says. You, the secret things belong to God. Secret things belong to God. We are the one that will search it out. God wants us to go far. But for us to go far in life, we need his dealing. 